I'm Amy from the Children's Museum of Sonoma County, and welcome to Storytime from My Tiny House on Wheels. Today we're going to read The Caboose Who Got Loose by Bill Peet. When Katie Caboose rambled down the train tracks, the engines were steamers with puffing smokestacks. She was a caboose who disliked being last, with an endless black cloud of smoke rolling past. It's not only smoky, the caboose would complain. There's the jerks and the jolts of this noisy freight train. The engine up front always wore a big smile as he lumbered along for mile after mile. He was proud of his being so powerful and strong that he could haul a freight train a hundred cars long. So on he went chugging, no worry or care, leaving Katie Caboose in the dark clouds of despair. Katie had little hope she would ever get loose or ever be anything but a caboose. I can wish, sighed poor Katie. What else could I do? If you wish hard enough, then your wish might come true. Often Katie would wish that she someday could be something quiet and simple, like a lovely elm tree or a ramshackle barn all alone on a hill where the noisiest thing was a squeaky windmill. It might become lonely, she thought, way out there, but at least there's a view with a lot of fresh air. Whenever she passed through a small country town, Katie wished she could stop and just settle down and be one of the houses who sat in a row on a tree-shaded street and have no place to go. It's so restful, thought Katie, where one can relax as she hurried and scurried on down the train tracks. What she wished most to be much more than the rest was a cabin she'd seen on her trips through the west a little log shack half covered with vines perched on a slope in a forest of pines how perfect thought katie as she hurried on by it to live there in the trees where it's peaceful and quiet but all the caboose could look forward to was a deep rocky canyon the train traveled through where huge boulders leaned way over the tracks in towering, top-heavy, gigantic stacks. What's holding them up? Frightened Katie would wonder, as the earth-shaking train went rumbling right under. If one should come loose and fall down upon her, it would squash Katie flat, and then she'd be a goner. If she didn't get squashed, there was one more to be dreaded, up the winding steep grades where the engine was headed. High up the mountains were terrible ledges where the track ran along, only feet from the edges. The view was breathtaking, but after one look, it was so upsetting that she shivered and shook. If she slipped off the track, then down she would go to be smashed into bits on the rocks far below. Then poor Katie received even more of a fright from a smoke-blackened tunnel as dark as the night. As she crept through the tunnel with a horrible thought that far back in the darkness she'd suddenly be caught by caboose-eating monsters who lurked all about. They would gobble her up before she got out. Her trips always ended in a city somewhere, way out in a freight yard with smoke clouding the air, where a turmoil of trains made a great noisy rumble on crisscrossing tracks an impossible jumble. The train came to a stop and the cars were unhitched. Then off to a sidetrack, the caboose was soon switched, where Katie would sit and take in the fine scenery with such lovely sights as a load of machinery. Coal cars and flat cars, lumber stacked on their backs, squealing carloads of pigs with snouts poking through cracks. They always left Katie in the midst of it all, while the engine received a complete overhaul. The huge engine at last had run down from the strain. From 10,000 miles he'd hauled the long train. Back in the roundhouse men swarmed all about to check over and under him, inside and out, replacing old pistons and bolts that were missing, patching leaks in the boiler that made a loud hissing, cleaning rust from his piping that ran everywhere, 
checking steam valves and pumps in great need of repair. As Katie sat there through one long, dreary night, staring up through the smoke at a red signal light, a small house appeared in the sky like a ghost, a shack of the switchman perched high on a post. I'd like to be you, said the shack very sadly. If I could trade places, I would very gladly. A caboose is what I've always wanted to be, for you have the best life from what I can see. Before Katie th could think of some way to reply, all at once a long freight train came thundering by. The next thing she knew, she was jerked and then jolted, then hitched to the train with her coupler bolted. As the train left the freight yard, poor Katie looked back to catch a last glimpse of the sad little shack. From now on, Katie promised, I shall never complain. I'll be a happy caboose at the end of a train and put up with the jolts, the train noise, and the rest, all the smoke that rolls by, or at least try my best. With her new point of view, she enjoyed the long ride. It was fun on a trip through the broad countryside. But when the train crept up a steep mountain grade, then poor Katie found she was still as afraid and once more she began to shiver and shake at the thought of the frightening curves she must take. Her unsteady wheels would cause her to slip, which would suddenly put a quick end to the trip. It was a hot afternoon, so the going was rough, and the engine up front was in a puffing big huff. He groaned, What a day to chug up such a grade on a bare mountainside without one bit of shade! When he came steaming over the very last hump, he lunged with a fury that made the cars jump, all the way back to Katie, who got such a jolt that it snapped off a rusty old coupling bolt. She was free of the train! At last she was loose! And away down the track went Katie Caboose. On down the grade she flew faster and faster, <gasps> straight for a curve and certain disaster! When Katie hit the curve, she took off like a kite, high over the treetops on her first and last flight. That would quickly have ended poor Katie Caboose if there hadn't been for two towering spruce. The caboose became caught in a very tight squeeze between the tall trunks of two evergreen trees. At first, she could barely believe her good luck. What a wonderful place it was to be stuck. She thought, sure, she was dreaming. It couldn't be true. Here she was in the trees with a beautiful view. It's so perfect, sighed Katie. Yet I'm really not free. I know sooner or later they'll come after me. And then, sure enough, up the mountains that night came a train with a crane and a powerful light. She could have gone leaping off here, came a shout. Like the great glaring eye then, the light searched about. It flashed past the trees down the steep rocky bluff, and it searched high and low, but not quite high enough. Or it would have soon spotted the missing caboose, but all they could find was a startled bull moose. Let's all call it quits, growled the boss of the crew. For all that I care, she's in Kalamazoo. Katie stayed in the tree chops. No one ever found her, except for the squirrels and the birds all around her. At last, she was free, just as free as the breeze. And how Katie did love it, up there in the trees. And indeed, oh indeed, oh indeed, Katie did. Thanks for joining us. See you next time as we read more books from my tiny house.